What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku and today I'm going to talk to you guys about harvesting mussels. Before I start the video, I want to let you guys know that there's going to be a lot of talking in this video, alright? Just letting you know. Mussels are in the category of bivalves and other bivalves can be things like clams and scallops and the way bivalves eat is they have a filter feeding system so which means that they run water through their system in order to feed so they have two valves right bivalves and they're running water in and out of their system so essentially what's in the water is inside of the muscle all right so just think of it like that what's in the water is inside the muscle there are times that our muscles are unsafe to eat uh, so let's, let's talk about what makes them unsafe to eat. Why is it unsafe sometimes and other times it's good to eat? So in the warm water months, you know, like during the summer, there's a thing called an algae bloom, also known as a red tide. What it is, is basically these tiny microscopic plankton that multiply in numbers and fill the whole coastline uh, with these tiny, tiny, tiny plankton. Uh, and sometimes it'll be so bad that the beach will be literally red or have a reddish tint at least um, which hence the name the red tide those for humans are you cannot eat them even if you cook the mussel still they are unsafe to eat so because these plankton are in the water so what's in the water is in the mussel so essentially if you're eating the mussels at the wrong time, you could get sick. And they cause something called paralytic shellfish poisoning. And it's very serious, and you could actually die from it. It's, there's a potential that you could die from it. So you really have to know that it's safe to eat. So then how do you know it's safe to eat? Well, for us in California, they make it really easy. Uh, you can just call the number right here and they will literally tell you if it's safe or not to eat shellfish and bivalves in particular. Other shellfish like crabs or limpids, abalone, things like that, they're not filter feeding. Uh, limpids are, what they do is uh, they're grazers. They're eating algae off the rock. It's like, you know, so they are, uh, they're not filtering water through the system. So it's not like what's in the water is inside them. It's like, it's a little different. So limpids are actually safe to eat all the time um, because they are not a bivalve. Let's see, let's see, let's see. What, what else, what else I want to talk about? So in some places there's a saying, eat shellfish during the months with R's in them. So September, October, November, all the way till April. They all have R's. So, so they say it's good to eat se shellfish September all the way through uh, April. But for us in California, September and October are still warm water months. It's still considered warm water months. So it's, for us, it's not safe to eat uh, bivalves yet during those months. So we can't really go off that rule. It's more like for us, November to April, okay? But there are random algae blooms even in the middle of winter. So you have to, every time you go out for bivalves, mussels and clams and scallops, you have to call this number. Um, please do so because there are just random algae blooms every time you go out and it's just a quick call. It's just an automated message and you just listen to it really quick and they'll tell you if it's safe or not. So legally in California, you have to have a California fishing license uh, in order to harvest mussels. And a fishing license, you don't have to take a test or anything. All you do is you just pay and you buy it. Uh, you can do it online or you can do it in person like at Big Five. For the legal limit for harvesting mussels in California is 10 pounds per person per day. And they say you have to carry a scale on you something that you can accurately measure the weight with. And it's weight with the shell, all right? You can't take them out of the shell. And so I carry something like this, just a small hang scale like this. And I just turn it on and I can hang, a, hang the bucket or hang the bag and I can weigh my muscles, how much I've collected. So look at the water condition right now. The current water condition is not very good. It's it, first of all, there's big, big waves. Look at that one behind it. Oh, that one is huge. And what it's doing is it's turning up all the sand in the water, so which makes the water murky. So every wave is gonna have a bunch of sand in it, right? 
and once the sand or once the waves hit the mussels they're constantly eating when the waves are hitting them so which means that these mussels are going to have a ton of sand inside of them because right now water is super super sandy so these mussels are going to be super super sandy as well the way you're supposed to harvest mussels legally is by hand you know a lot of people they're like yeah use it just use a crowbar blah 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 use tools but legally you are not allowed to use tools to harvest mussels it's not like these mussels are running away anywhere so really don't use a crowbar don't use tools you're gonna mess up the mussel bed and they won't be able to grow back in that spot um, instead just use your hands just wear a pair of gloves because these are really sharp here oh wave coming so as I was saying the water condition today is uh, very poor and like I said what's in the water is in the muscle right so there's gonna be a lot of sand in these muscles um, when when the waves are calm and the, and it's very clear you can get the muscle straight off the rock and eat it right away without any sand in them I've done it many many times you can go home and you can purge these guys in water in a bowl of water you can just throw them in and they'll cycle out the sand but then it's just not as fresh it's not as good the best is to just get them straight from the beach here and eat them right away I brought my cooking stuff right now and I have I was going to steam some up but seeing the water I don't think I'm gonna I'm gonna harvest any today I don't think I'm gonna eat any I think it'll just be all sandy and it won't be good so it's sometimes you know foraging is not always about getting how much you can but knowing when not to forage too I think is important as well hope you learn at least one thing if not then you're already knowledgeable you already know say you're in a survival situation and you can't call any biotoxin line or uh, Department of Public Health to see if the mussels are safe to eat so what you can do is a uh, one side effect of paralytic shellfish poisoning is a tingling of the lips and that happens pretty quickly I think in less than 30 minutes um, your lips start to tingle so what some people do to make sure it's safe to eat is that they will rub the muscle actually on their lip I guess kind of like lipstick putting on lipstick and they'll wait an hour or two see if they get any side effects see if it starts to tingle and that's a sign of shellfish poisoning and if they don't and you chew a little bit in your mouth spit it back out wait a little more and then no, no side effects then should be good to eat I wouldn't do that if I, unless I was in a survival situation but if I was ever in that situation oh yeah L last little side note all right peace all right so now the water condition is looking a little better last week was really bad but now it's a better than last week not great yet but I think we can harvest some mussels now so we can cook it up for you and yeah and have a nice meal so there's mussels all over this place you can look at all the rocks and there's going to be mussels on a lot of them uh, if you want the big ones they're a little further out but there's a lot of small ones kind of higher up in the intertidal zone so the tide doesn't even have to be that low to get mussels I think at a two foot tide you could still get mussels um, that's how high in the intertidal zone mussels are so they're one of the highest up and so that makes it one of the easiest things to harvest uh, I'm gonna fill my bucket up with some water so what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow these mussels to kind of clean themselves out while, while I harvest so when I once I cook it up there's not much sand in it right you never want to risk it especially when the swells are this big uh, and turn your back to the ocean so never do that so good thing here I can face the ocean and gather the mussels at the same time and this right here is referred to as the beard and this is um, what mussels use in order to attach themselves onto the rocks you can pull them off like that most of the time So a lot of the time these mussels are going to have a bunch of these small barnacles on them so the way I do it just rub the two together and 
and they'll mostly come off. Just like that. Now it looks pretty good. And this is all I'm harvesting today. It's about 30 mussels. All, right, all the mussels are clean, now let's go cook them up. All right, let's cook these mussels. I'm gonna heat up the pan first, actually. It's a bit windy, so I'm gonna put this, hopefully block most of the wind. This is just the case, case for the stove. If you're ever curious of what knives I'm using, make sure to check the description because most of the times I'll put it down there. Uh, but there are times when I have these other knives that you can't buy online, so I don't have any links to them, all right? But if I do, they'll be in the description. Olive oil in the pan. Nice chunky pieces of garlic. Pan is not hot yet. But we moved to the back of my car because it's way too windy out there. Uh, the flame is not gonna heat up the pan enough. Let's do this. Garlic in. Just some canned tomatoes. Just let it brown just slightly. And boom, right into it. All right, to this, I'm just gonna add a touch of salt water straight from the ocean right behind me. Just like that. And we'll let that come to a boil. All right, that's pretty good. Now, I'm gonna make a sacrifice. I'm gonna add a little bit of my beer inside of here. Oh, you guys, you guys know this one, yeah? Dead Guy Ale from Rogue. Ooh, such a good beer. I think this is one of the first beers that really got me into drinking beer. Let me take a little sip first. Cheers, guys. <laughs> good, yeah, just as I remember. All right, a little bit of beer in there. A little bit more. Let that come to a boil again, and we'll add the mussels. Yeah, nice boiling pot. We will add the mussels right into it. I'm gonna add some butter right now. All right, let's let that melt. Give that about six, seven minutes. They're opening up. I don't think they're all open yet, but some of them are opening up. We'll give it just about one more minute. I have some parsley stem here. I'm just gonna sprinkle that right on top. All right, it's done. You know what would go perfect with this? Some artichoke bread from Pescadero. This is gonna be perfect to dip into the sauce. Woo, cheers. Oh yeah, beautiful orange color on the mussels. Mm. Delicious, that is delicious. Mm. Sauce is delicious. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice little kick. That canned tomato had the mm -hmm. peppers in it. Oh, the combination of this bread oh, being soaked in there. Mm. The garlic artichoke bread. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. I could just stick a straw and drink this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. Oh, lemon. Lemon. Get a little lemon juice on there. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm. Lemon. Mm-hmm. That lemon kicked it up a notch. For sure, 100%. That's amazing. All right, this piece has an artichoke. Put a couple nice pieces of mussel. A little lemon juice like that. Dip it. Oh that. yeah, dip that in the sauce. Oh yeah, soak it. Mm, that is mussel artichoke bread deliciousness. You see that soaked? That bread is soaked in the sauce too. Ooh, hoo -hoo. look how bright and orange that muscle. Mmm, that is some quality muscles. That, my friends, 
is delicious. Woo! Dead Guy Ale is, is a solid beer. Haven't had it in a long time, so I wanted to taste it again. I have chili guava. Apple side. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Mmm, 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 mmm. Ooh, just a straight sauce. Good. Mmm. God damn, that's good. No sand at all. Mm -mm. You need sand? No, huh? No sand at all. Perfect. Perfect. Muscles. Woo! Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I could do that all over again. Well, we're gonna finish this up. We're gonna finish that bread. You may have noticed that we're wearing our Christmas sweaters. Mm. Woo! Merry Christmas to all of you guys. Happy holidays. And I hope you enjoy just like we have today. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Peace. Mm.